We were looking live at a breaking news alert. Again, this is Orange Park High School. Classes canceled because of this bomb threat. And as Bruce was just mentioning, investigators still on that scene working to find out if there is any real danger there. We just heard from a spokesperson with the Clay County Sheriff's Office about 20 minutes ago, and she said at this point, nothing suspicious has been found, which is encouraging. But she did tell us at about 7 o'clock this morning, it would take three or four hours because the campus is so large. There are 2,300 students. Gives you an idea of how big the school is who are on campus. Not today, of course, certainly, and they're at home. Right now, though, we are working to reach out to parents and students and neighbors, really, to hear from them. Can you imagine, you know, you get that call or you show up at your bus stop this morning and the school bus driver says, Hey, classes are are canceled today. Yeah, and, and you know, as as a parent, I mean, we know you're immediately going to worry. Yeah. And, and as we were seeing this unfold, you're thinking, okay, so wait a minute. So they canceled school? Does that mean it's more serious? Does that mean there is something really more credible to this? So you know, there's been a lot of questions this mm -hmm. morning. We have uh, we do have a lot of those questions answered. And what we have learned in the past 30 minutes is that the Clay County School District is planning to create a PSA type video. You know, really for students and parents. And you know, this is all about bomb threats. The district announced just before 7 a.m. that Orange Park High would be closed for the day. Again, this is just out of an abundance of caution. And uh, the announcement was made about 30 minutes before classes were scheduled to start for the day. So school buses were notified. They returned students to their bus stops if they had already picked them up in the morning. A small number of students, just three, were taken to Orange Park Junior High School, which is just about a, a mile and a half away from the high school. For those students who maybe got to school early and then were told, hey, you need to leave, they were taken to Junior High. All of the district's other schools are operating normally, not impacted. Melanie is live at Orange Park High School. School with the Clay County School spokesperson who's been updating us really throughout the morning. Melanie? Hey guys, so you gave a lot of the details, so let me just kind of show you about what's going on here at Orange Park High School. We have seen many of the police officers here, deputies with Clay County, leave the scene today as they do feel pretty confident at this point that they've done a thorough job of sweeping the building. They're still making sure, but they have found nothing here at the school that would warrant them to be concerned. But that call did come in, and it came in early. I'm sorry, it was an email, not a call, but the email came in. It came in early, and they could not make a call as to whether or not this very large building was secure, and that's why they decided to cancel classes here at the high school for the day. And they are going to be communicating with parents through many different ways to let them know when school will open back up, if that will be tomorrow morning, which pretty much is what everybody is hoping for. So, Gavin Rollins, I do want to bring you in because we talked about a threat that happened two weeks ago at Middleburg High School. It was a tweet, and you guys were able to get in there, talk with the student who sent that tweet, and make sure that the school was safe, that was secure determined school was not disrupted. That student was arrested, though, and you all want people to understand that this is a serious offense to call in a threat. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's a message. What we're working is we're stepping up our social media training for students and we're incorporating that into the curriculum and really um, trying to communicate that message that think before you uh, post and, and make sure that you're very careful with what you post because that's permanent and it, it can have uh, life altering um, consequences. And this is very serious. And so um, we're actually working on a um, coordinated message that we're going to send out um, this week from the superintendent, I'm just kind of reiterating that message that it's very important to, but if we're, you're a parent, have those conversations with your students and help them understand, uh, walk them through that and help them understand this is very serious and making these kinds of threats are not funny. Um, it's not a joke. It's a very serious um, threat. And so we're, we're working, um, partnering with, uh, with parents in the community and other agencies, but we're also working to communicate that and increase training at every school for social media and how to appropriate use it. It can be great. Uh, you can communicate with friends, but it also uh, can present some challenges. Because in that case in Middleburg, um, the student, when the police would have talked to them, that is what they said. It was just a joke. It was something that they thought was funny, but had big consequences. Yeah, a lot of times students, um, sometimes students will think it's a joke, but it can it can be very serious. Uh, it can result in arrest, uh, ex expelling um, from school, uh, being expelled from school in some cases. Um, and so a lot of um, negative consequences from that because uh, we live in a day and age where every threat has to be taken seriously and so we really um, 
we need the community to help us in uh, making sure that they are wise and appropriate in their use with social media. And social media certainly helped today. You guys were able to communicate to parents and we didn't see a lot of chaos here at the school. Even the junior high school, not a lot of students had to be taken there because they got the word that it was canceled today. How will you be communicating with those parents, letting them know how to proceed? Sure. Um, we Yeah, we encourage parents to download the app. That's the easiest way for us to communicate because a lot of times we also do a call home. But if you have a home phone number listed, some Sometimes you won't get that message right away. Um, so we encourage them to download the One Clay app, um, Clay County Schools. You can just type that in and then you can download the app. That gives you a direct message. It's almost like a text message, push notification that comes to you. But we communicate every way we know how. Um, and I, I've jokingly said, but we use homing pigeons if, if we thought that was effective. We want to communicate with parents. So if you're a parent and you're not getting a message for some reason, uh, look at updating your contact information. Make sure that you have all that um, good at the school. And and later, um, as we uh, get the all clear from the sheriff's office, we'll be updating parents on what we know um, and, and what the situation is as, as we know it. So. Okay, Kevin Rollins, thank you so much. Thank Clay you. County letting us know the very latest. He's in communication with the superintendent, also in communication with the Clay County Sheriff's Department to kind of keep us updated. But again, they are making sure this abundance of caution that the school is safe and they'll be letting everyone know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow via social media and any way that they can get in touch with you. For now, we're live here in Orange Park, right in front of the high school. Melanie Lawson, Channel 4, the local station. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Melanie. You know, we've been talking with our crime and safety analyst, Gil Smith, about, you know, what comes next in this investigation. He is joining us by phone right now. Uh, Gil, you know, in this day and age, they can very easily trace these emails so at this point, we realize they're not releasing a lot of information to us because they are probably in the process of doing that right now. Um, I know, you know, you worked in the school system for a very long time. Um, because of this shutdown today, I mean, of course, it's, you know, tying up a lot of resources in addition to a lot of other things. Um, what do you think is going to happen from here? If this is a student, do you think they'll make an example of them? Uh, yeah, I didn't, they're sort of breaking up. I didn't quite hear the last part of it. Well, from here, they will continue to search the school at this point. Now, if, say, for example, Clay County, they may not have bomb sniffing dogs. Um, what sheriff's offices around the state have is a mutual aid agreement. And all they have to do is make a phone call and they can call in um, to maybe the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office who may have the dogs. They would come in and search. And they would actually search the school with, like, the custodial personnel, um, people who actually know the building very well and know where to search and that type of thing. So that's what's going to be going on today. Uh, I mean, actually, right now. In terms of just searching the school, that's the main priority right now, just to make sure that the school is safe. And they've done a very thorough search. So they won't feel pressured to do this in a hurry with students standing outside waiting to get in. They can really take their time and do a very thorough search. Yeah, it's interesting, Gil. I mean, we know that uh, you worked, obviously, in Duval County for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. You are were a, a uh, school resource officer, so you're very familiar with teenagers and school campuses. Uh, we do not know, obviously, who sent in this email, but in the past, we know that a lot of times this is a student who doesn't want to go to school, for maybe for some other reason, and maybe thinks that this is a joke or a prank. Explain why they should never, ever think that. Yeah, and the representative that you had on earlier did a very good job explaining that. And it seems like they're going to take the, the best measures. And that is, once the students come back to school, is to sit down and explain to them, explain the consequences, explain um, the seriousness of it, the inconvenience of it, and also the legal consequences of this also. How could it affect their college admission if, if they see this on their record? Because it will go on their records in military, colleges. They all have access to this. Because for the most part, younger people, they live in the moment. They don't think beyond tomorrow in most cases. So they're not thinking about how their lives and other lives are affected by the decisions that they make. So if you take your time and really explain this, and sometimes that's all it takes. And for most students, they'll get the message. Of course, you're always going to have a few that no matter what you tell them, they're going to do illegal activity. But for the most part, once they really get them really to understand and think about their futures beyond tomorrow, this type of thing just doesn't happen very often once they understand that. Gil, you know, I know, you know, as a resource officer for so many years, when you heard this morning the reaction to actually close down the school, were you very surprised? And, um, no, and I wasn't surprised because it was like an hour or so before school started. Um, so you didn't have all those people. You don't want all those people coming in. And what I'm, what I'm sure they did was they made an all call to the home and the cell phone of all the parents, letting them know what was going on. And maybe even some of the students, they may even have that on their cell phones so they can be aware of what's going on.
so you didn't have a mad rush of um, students there. Now, had this happened, let's say, three hours, four hours prior to the start of school, they could have gotten there quickly, checked the school, and maybe had the school open. So a lot of the decision-making has to do with timing. Gil Smith, our crime and safety analyst, joining us over the phone. Gil, thank you very much. Do appreciate it. And, you know, one of the reasons that they also said that they made the decision that they did is, is they didn't want the kids standing, standing out in the cold, in the cold weather across the, street, across the street. for. And they said because the campus is so big, it would take three to four hours. So, um, you know, they're thinking about not only safety, but also the comfort level of the students as well. Absolutely.